No game has had more of a profound impact on me than Outer Wilds. I genuinely believe this game is a work of art and something that every gamer should experience. Any of my fellow Hearthians will know the bittersweet feeling after finishing it, knowing that they have played possibly the best video game ever created, but also that they may never play anything as good ever again. Well, I'm happy to report that I may have found the next best thing. Pacific Drive is one of the best games I've played in years. It's only March and it's already a strong contender for my game of the year. The basic premise is you drive a beat up old station wagon through a nuclear exclusion zone, scavenging for resources that you use to maintain and upgrade your vehicle. This doesn't sound too similar at first, but the more I played, the more it became clear to me that this shares a lot of DNA with Outer Wilds. Whoa, 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 hold up. This is a quick warning that while there won't be any major spoilers for Outer Wilds, I will be showing and talking about some of the gameplay aspects. And I know firsthand that this is a game that is best experienced without knowing anything about it. So if you haven't played Outer Wilds yet, uh, first of all, screw you, I'm jealous. But also, if you do intend to play it, then I strongly recommend you going and experiencing it on your own first, and then hopefully you'll come back and watch this video later. Okay, can we, can we talk about the game now? We, 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 we are in the clear? Hey, okay, sweet. In Outer Wilds, you're stuck in a time loop and the main goal is figuring out how to get out of it. This gives the gameplay loop a sort of a run-based structure that you might see in roguelike games such as Hades or The Binding of Isaac. You have 22 minutes or less to explore as much as you can before the loop resets. Though, instead of unlocking new characters or items, the meta progression this time around is knowledge. Instead of a time loop, Pacific Drive has what I like to call a space loop. You drive out as far as you can, and when your boots filled with resources, or your bonnets flown off and your engines exposed, or you run out of petrol, you can call in a gateway that will teleport you back to the safety of your garage. And hey look, both loops even end with a bright light. Both these games use a personal vehicle as the primary means of transport. Your spaceship in Outer Wilds and your station wagon in Pacific Drive. But more than that, these vehicles become a safe haven for you from the dangers outside. Leaving it exposes you to harsh environments and you can only stay away for so long before needing to return to the safety of its interior. This helps create a bond between you and your machine and a feeling of helplessness when you lose it. A big part of Outer Wilds is discovery, learning the intricate details of each planet and how to avoid their obstacles. In Pacific Drive, this comes in the form of anomalies. These strange entities are the result of the radioactivity and not unlike those that you would find in the Stalker games. Whenever I encountered a new one, I found myself constantly saying, What the fuck is that thing? What the fuck is that? What the fuck? Oh, what the fuck is this? Oh, what the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? Over time, you do get used to them, but it's that initial contact that is truly special, where you don't quite know what will happen, but you're curious to find out. Another big part is deduction. In Outer Wilds, you are constantly on the lookout for clues about the history of the star system and ultimately what is causing the time loop. In Pacific Drive, you're also looking for a way out, but the deduction mechanic that I find far more interesting is the car quirks. Because your car is a piece of shit, over time it will develop quirks, and these are funny little behaviours that your car will start to exhibit. For example, every time you put your car into park, then the passenger door will open, or whenever you reverse, the bonnet will come up. Once you notice these quirks, you can guess what the problem is back at your garage's tinker station, and if you successfully diagnose it, then you unlock the ability to then fix it. In this interview with Jeremy Clarkson from Eric Banner's Love the Beast, he talks about how having a car with floors can allow for a greater connection. Recently, for Top Gear, we had to go to America. We were given $1,000, I think it was, US dollars, to buy a car, and then we had to drive it from south from Miami right the way up through Florida and Alabama and, and to New Orleans. And I bought this Camaro. It was a, it was a V8, just, uh, Camaro absolutely shot when I got it. Brakes had had it, power steering pump had had it, an alarming clonking from the front suspension. The, the steering wheel was coming off. It was re there was a dead body in the back. It was just appalling. 
and it got progressively worse. Inevitably, the air conditioning wasn't working in August in the southern states. When I got to New Orleans, I loved that car more than I loved pretty much life itself. I was because I was the only person, anyone else that would have got into it would simply not have been able to make it work. There wasn't enough clutch play, there wasn't, you had to work out how to turn the steering wheel. Everything was, you had to be in tune with it, absolutely. When something has foibles and won't handle properly, that gives it a particularly human quality because it makes mistakes. And that's how you can build a relationship with a car that other people won't get. As your station wagon gains quirks, you begin to understand the little details that affect how it drives and handles, making the bond with your car that much stronger. I wouldn't classify either of these games as a horror, but there certainly can be unsettling parts. They both play on the fear of the unknown, where you might see something that may end up being mostly harmless, but because you don't know, you're more afraid of the potential that it has. And since they don't rely on jump scares, these non-horror games become more effective than like 90% of actual horror games. The setting for Pacific Drive is clearly based on the Pacific Northwest, specifically the Olympic Peninsula in Washington State. In this interview with Wesley Martin, the art director for Outer Wilds, he explains that part of the inspiration for Timber Hearth was Mount Rainier, which is also found in Washington. Do you get it yet? And oh man, who could forget how incredible the music is in Outer Wilds. Pacific Drive not only has a great original soundtrack, but it also features a radio station with artists from the Pacific Northwest, with songs ranging from like 90s punk to country to doof doof techno, I don't know, music man, I just play games, okay? So if like me, you've been obsessed with Outer Wilds since playing it, then I can wholeheartedly recommend that you take Pacific Drive for a spin. And in celebration of this great game, I'm running a giveaway for a free copy of Pacific Drive on PC. And it's definitely not because I totally forgot that I already pre-ordered the game and now I have an extra key that I couldn't get a refund for. So if you'd like to participate, then head on over to my Gleam IO page to register your entries. And I'll leave a link for that in the description down below as well. Good luck. Thank you so much for listening to me and be curious on your journey.